All right, welcome to what I believe is, God, I think we're up to, I'm not sure what episode we're up to, but welcome to Wolfie's Skype Sessions. Uh, this is a Metallic Onslaught interview with Mr. James Rivera from Hellstar. How you doing, guy? Hey, I'm doing uh, much better. Doing very well. For that. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how much you want to get into. Um, but this, this interview was uh, postponed for a bit. But, you know, it's like, I, I leave that up to you. Um, we're mainly here to talk about your album here. Yeah, well, hey, you know, it's cool. I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, um, when I thought I made it to the finish line without getting COVID, because, you know, now the vaccines are out, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I went that whole time and I just kind of figured, well, because I'm a vampire, so I'm not going to get this shit. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> I I bit the wrong chick who had just like too much COVID in her, I guess. And uh, yeah, I, I came down with it and um, it was one hell, was spelled with one L, of course, for Hellstar, one hell of a ride. Um, but fortunately for me, uh, I was completely over it and 100% like it never happened in two weeks and one day which was still longer than I anticipated because my brother got it. and He was done in four days, but everybody's different, you know? So, um, I don't, I don't think I have any side effects. I mean, I'm actually on my way to San Antonio to rehearse with my band metal asylum. Uh, cause I have a show tomorrow in San Antonio and another one in a small town called Seguin, Texas on Saturday. And, um, you know, ready to rehearse, been singing, um, I, I, that's about it. I mean, every morning I get up, I, uh, when I first wake up and then I get out of the bed and I walk around, I do start coughing a little bit. I, st I have, still have a little bit of a little cough. It's real quick and short. Uh, and I'm still like coughing up. Um, so I hate to sound gross folks, but I, I, I mean, for a small little piece of shit virus that I, you can't even see it under a microscope, it has a lot of guts. So yeah. Uh, that's what that's what the uh, the doctor says. You're just puking up the, the the dead virus parts. I said like guts, intestines, and you know. You, you, he goes, "You're a funny guy," but yeah, I guess if you want to put it that way, how can that little thing have that much insides? I don't get it, you know. So, but I think that's part of it. But you know, when you have a when you have a typical flu, you the cough is always the last thing to go, and that's probably why because you're still coughing up the last of the the bacteria, the virus, or whatever it is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so that that's that that that's that's the stint of that story. So All right. now I just Good, I no. just pretend it never happened. Right, exactly. It was a bad dream. The important part is it's over, you're able to sing and uh you know, move on. That's that's a good thing. So uh, to, yeah, exactly. You got the new album here, um, Clad in Black, which um at first um we, we thought it was like, you know, um new original material but you kind of broke it up into like a two disc set and it's like the first disc is kind of like um an ep with some new right. tracks and three yep. really cool cover songs um one of them being one of my favorite dio era sabbath songs which is uh, after all the dead yeah um, let's talk about this a little bit um the other disc is a reissue of um the, the title escapes me at the moment. Vampiro. Vampiro. I almost said Nosferatu, but that's an older title. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the Romanian way to say vampire. Vampiro yes. is the uh, is the vato way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> it was also a WCW wrestler at one time. <laughs> exactly right, and it's my nickname now, like permanently. So I'm 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 okay with that. Good deal. So um. Tell us a little about this. Uh, what led you to decide to release this? Well, so first of all, the master plan was after Vampiro, which was already almost going on five years since it's been released. Right. And the, 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 uh, the, the ammunition that we really needed for a band like us, for me and P, just wasn't there because of it being a new label. You know, it doesn't matter that Dave Ellison owns it. That doesn't mean anything. You know, it, it all comes down to the people that run the label. And what right. they have as far as uh, ammunition to launch things, they did you know fairly good job. I would say that was to, out of all the bands they picked up, I still say that we were the biggest name they ever had anyway. So that should tell you a lot right there. Absolutely. And so, and I don't even think they're doing any. I don't see nothing about them anymore. But 
So when that when that deal little in that little short deal ended, you know, I was I realized we should have never left the Germans. So I, you know, went back to AFM, and then AFM told me how Massacre's part of the family, and bands like us are going there, and some of the bigger names like Mushroom Head and the more, you know, I don't know what you call that, the modern sellable stuff, is kind of staying with AFM. And I said, fine, you know, it's still all the same family. I said, great. So that's how it happened. But when I went back to them, I talked to Thomas for a long time, and I said, you know, man, we are a band that's been around for a long time. I didn't know that we're not going to be stadium status. Um, level ever at this point in our lives you know and and i don't think that very many new metal bands will ever reach that status anymore either i said but we have made a dent in the world and i think that every real metal head in the world has a special place in their heart for hellstar i know that we we've made our impression in the world we're not a band that like oh i never heard of them you know it's like oh those guys yeah the texas well, you know everybody knows who we are so at that point you're just kind of happy that you can you can live with the fact that that's what you're going to do but what I don't want is a bunch of trophies on my wall that just hardly did anything. And right. um, so I decided that, you know, because the bigger bands have always done it. I said, you know what we've never done in our lives. We have never like put out a single, followed it up with an EP and then a full album and bam, 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 three atom bombs in one year. And the name is just there so much. Even your biggest fans going to go like, that's. Ah, stop it. You're in my face all the time, <laughs> you know, but out of sight, out of mind. And so that was the master plan. And then COVID hit and fucked it all up. And, of course. Uh, you know, so the, the original plan was to put out the black wing single with the after all cover in May of 2020 end of July, while we were going to be doing headbangers open air and a couple other festivals, the EP would have came out end of November, uh, first of January, the full length album. Then we'd be ready for right now. We would be getting gearing up to we'd probably be on tour right now in Europe and then probably ending at Keep It True and all that got flushed down the toilet. So that was the plan. And after Thomas heard me out, why I wanted to do it, what it meant to me, he just said, I couldn't agree with you 500 percent, James. I love the idea. You're you're a smart man. I think that I love it. And people, hardcore fans love nostalgic things to get a hold of. So that's how we're looking at this. The, the EP uh, plus the, the uh, uh, release, uh, re-release of Vampiro, which didn't get all, all the attention it really needed, made like some my, nice little digi pack. Then it even came out on vinyl. You know, the, the single something we never did, that's completely sold out, <laughs> you know, and gone forever. And so I was right. I went to Vegas finally for the first time and hit Snake Eyes. And so, and obviously, um, in in the in the history of uh, since since the since the Metal Blade days, this is the most interviews I have lined up for the U.S. And yeah, Europe is a given. We know that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Germans, Greeks, and then blah blah blah. And going to they they love Hellstar. So I'm gonna do. 50 oh yes. Interviews. But, I mean, the difference between the U.S. and Europe in general when it comes to metal acceptance is just amazing. Because. Like, I'd love to see us over here in the U.S have the same attitude but i don't know if we're ever going to see that day but yeah I, I get right. Right where you're coming from exactly so you know that was the whole plan and that's why that's why everything worked out the way it did and the covers you know where you know people love covers people like to know what your roots are what you were what you were playing when you were a kid in a garage absolutely so i know um you know, with Texas reopening, you'd already been doing some live shows before you got sick. And I know you're, uh, you've mentioned preparing for rehearsals and what, what all you got coming up in that regard. Um, now that, uh, things seem to be hopefully improving in this, in the, blah, blah, in this regard. Well, for now I'm only doing tribute shows, I, you know, cause I've always been kind of a king of doing tribute bands on the side of being in my international acts to keep me even right. busier. <laughs> and, it's, and it's only a simple reason because just because things are open 100 percent, just because the uh, our governor took away the mask mandate and all that. Still, yep. there's there, you know, half the population is still in fear of this, of the disease. So there the clubs are still not getting 100 percent packed any, right now. Right. And because the, the what clubs survived took such a beating that they can't offer what you were used to before. And if we start getting out and playing with Hellstar in general and we start taking offers that were like 
you know, a fourth of what we ever got or not even that on a door deal, then you never crawl out of that hole again. So yeah, we just right. decided that as bad as we really want to play and support the new EP, which we should be doing, we just know it for a business standpoint of view right now, it is just not the time for us to get out just yet. I would say early next year, probably we will finally do a Houston home show and it'll be sold out. Because, you know, but life has to be back to 100% normal regardless. Oh, I fully agree. Yes. You know, it's it's so. bad that this is how it has to be. But I would rather see people healthy and able to, you know, enjoy it and yes, enjoy and it like it never happened. And then like COVID will be like a, it was it was all like a bad dream, a two year nightmare that you did. That's you know, what we, I'm all slept, we all slept for two years straight and, and it was we. Had we'll all had the same bad dream, you know. That's the way I want it to be. Then we'll be playing. Yeah, we'll get out and we'll f do shit. But you know, the good thing about it is when that does happen, our like, like our agent in Europe was already saying, and you know, the guys that I, that I work with here for shows in the U.S. Dude, you're probably gonna have to do two shows sold out. And I'm like, well, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because people, yeah, because people are gonna be dying to see you. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm already anticipating, you know, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm a little older than I used to be. So it's like, I don't get into the pits quite as much. I, I used to hang out at the fringe and maybe push kids back in if they, it's like, you know, get in there, noob. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating, you know, the energy when it does come back, because it's going to be crazy. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, in yeah, a yeah. Way. But, um. Speaking of nightmarish things, um, I'm a horror fan. You're obviously a horror fan. If you don't mind, I'd like to kind of just talk a little horror for a bit before we wrap this up. Okay. Um, you know, my, my, my thing is, you know, it's like, I think the first question, because um, you seem to like the vampires, Bella Lugosi or Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee, hands down, brother. Christopher Lee, hands down, out of all of them, at least in my book. That you know, right? That's just yeah. I, you know, I I love Bella, but Christopher did it more. He he was well, he like, brought I, out the evilness in Dracula. That you know, he did. He, that Dracula. It, you know, well, a lot of people forget Dracula is Satan's friend. He is he is he is diabolic. It's just that we don't, you know, he don't have horns and a tail, but he plays right. cards with Satan all the time. I mean, he basically sold his soul to the devil. He's the devil's pawn to do really evil things while on Earth. So a lot of people don't realize that Dracula is satanic. And Christopher Lee is the first to actually bring out uh, the, that aspect of Dracula. And that's what I loved. And he was the one that brought out the red inside the cave that looked a little bit more devilish. And uh, I just loved it the way he never even talked. He just pointed half the time. You know, right. I, think in that, yeah. <laughs> I, I think in that movie, uh, Dracula has risen from the grave uh, when he's going back to his castle and he's dragging that one girl that he wanted to bang out through the whole bang through the whole movie. And uh, and they uh, the priest and uh, what's his name? Her boy friend went and chained a, that big gold cross in front of in front of his door so he couldn't enter his own castle he stops and he throws her to the ground and he, he points at the thing and he looks at her he goes get that thing out of my sight and that's all he says through the whole movie yeah. <laughs> I, I believe i that was the one i picked up on blu-ray at random it just happened to be in the grocery store in a bargain bin for like four bucks i'm like you can't go wrong i think i picked that oh, up in the yeah, book. Yeah. Um, both the, the, the hammer, um, version of the mummy, both for under oh, five. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the hammer films always Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee and Peter Lorre. Yeah. Which, you know, kind of led up to my next question anyway, was, you know, universal or hammer. And I mean, I love both, but that's one where I'm really torn because I, I, I just love them both. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, universal had a lot of good monster movies you know so if it wasn't for universal there wouldn't have been no wolfman and king kong and i i believe godzilla became even part of universal too so i mean uh, uh, i believe like the original what was released as gojira and then you know yeah 
down for U.S. audiences with Raymond Burr, I think had been picked up initially by, uh, was distributed by Universal. Exactly. Right, yep. right. Yeah. So, yeah, he got his green card. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think my first horror was probably a Universal title. I'm positive it was Creature from Black Lagoon, but, you know, it Oh, uh, I, was, I was just about to bring up my buddy Gilman. Yeah, Gilman. Yep. I love the Gilman. He's a badass yes, dude. It, it was a love affair yeah. right from there because it was that and King Kong. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Good enough. All right. <laughs> well, I do believe that is really all I have for you today, man. Um, I'm glad you're well, feeling better. Thank you, Randy. I yeah, looking- man. Well, yeah, thank you for being yeah. patient and uh, appreciate it. And you're up in Rochester, aren't you? I am in Seneca Falls, New York, which is about an hour away from Rochester and an okay. Okay. hour gotcha. away from yeah, Syracuse. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost exactly an hour away from both Rochester and Syracuse. Gotcha. Which okay, is, yeah. A prime we, had a, we, had a, we had a really good show in Rochester when we played with Flotsam. As a I matter of fact, that, that show, uh, and yes, it was incredible. I, as a matter of fact, I think a lot of people said you guys just took the show big time. And I said, oh, no. And they were going, no, really. It, it was, and I think it was just because of the fact that we hadn't been to Rochester since 1986. So, oh, I'm pretty you sure. Know, you know, with um, like Destruction played there back in 2004. Yeah, that's the first time we ever played there in some kind of salon. Yeah, and, uh, and, that, and that's the last there time. in like 30 years. And yeah, we, we yeah. like to see bands come back who haven't been in a while, you know? And I had never seen yeah. Hellstar before, and I was all about it. Go. Yeah, awesome. Good so, deal, uh, man. Well, listen, man, you take care of yourself. Stay safe. Yes. Uh, you, and your lo- you and your loved ones. And um, don't kid yourself. This little fucker is real. Yes. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not a hoax after all. But um, it's not as bad as the way they made it sound. And I think that... The, 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 all the deaths that were connected to it were people that were already close to death with something else already anyway. And that was the part that I didn't like that about them over-exaggerating. Too. Yeah. And they were a lot of older people. Like in Italy, which why they had such huge numbers is there's a lot of old people in Italy, thanks to the good right. red wine. But, you know, that you know, when you're 89 years old, you know, and you get something like that, that's pretty hard for, you know, what's it's left for you to fight back. something. Exactly. That's, that, that was the big problem there. And so, you know, um, I, I know that they over-exaggerated numbers too as well. And, and they were some, a lot of the hospitals and doctors were getting paid just to put positive. I, so I know all that's true too, but I do will say that the, that the virus does exist. <laughs> And uh, you guys over there up in that area, since you know, I know you live in the colder weather than I do, take care of yourselves. And uh, I hope to see all of you guys soon when everything's back to 100% and this all seemed like a bad dream. Yes. Same here, brother. All right. All right. You take care. Thanks for taking the time. Um, you can tune in, listen to the Metallic Onslaught, visit my YouTube page, The Randy Metal Wolf. And uh, there you go. Awesome, brother. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye.